Today we shall look at estimation of population size. There are actually two techniques used to estimate the population size. One is used for organisms that do not move, they are immobile. So this technique is known as the, sem uh, the, the quadrant sampling technique. Now the other one is used if the organisms move around. And this technique is known as the CMRR technique which is the capture, mark, release and recapture technique. Let's look at the first technique. Now what is a quadrant? A quadrant is a square frame made of metal, wood or string. And the size of the quadrant depends on the size, the distribution and of course the density of the organisms. Let's say if you want to study the population of grass on a field, then most likely we need a quadrant of 1 meter times 1 meter because the field is so big. And then on the other hand, if you want to study the population size of lichen, lichen is so small, and most likely we are, we are going to use a quadrant okay, of 10 centimeter times 10 centimeter. And there are three formulae come with, three, uh, with this quadrant sampling, uh, sampling technique. The first one is percentage coverage, the second one is density, and the third one is frequency. So let me show how they work. So let's look at percentage coverage. Now, when are we going to use this formula? So the, uh, this formula is used, for example, when you can't, you can't actually differentiate uh, each, each in the individual plant. Now, for example, let me grass us here. Look at it. It will take you years, uh, years for you to calculate the number of them. Uh, so it is impractical to use uh, density and in this time we got to use percentage coverage in the second formula we are dealing with the total number of individuals of a species in the quadrant so this formula is suitable to be used if we are able to count the number of each individual in that specific habitat then what about frequency now if you are lazy enough you do not have time to to count uh, to calculate the percentage coverage or you don't want to, to count each each individual species in that habitat then you might consider using frequency I'm going to show you with example now let this one be our school field wow it's so big now we are going to study the population size of two organisms here one is grass A uh, and the other one is plant B and plant B you can you can see each individual plant but grass A because they they uh, spread by running roots okay you can't actually uh, separate the, the grasses okay from uh, one individual from the other individual uh, so to to estimate their population size I'm going to get 10 students to help me each of them with, uh, with a quadrant and the size of the quadrant is 1 meter times 1 meter alright now they are on the school field then they throw their quadrant randomly on the school field then I ask them to estimate the percentage coverage of uh, let's say uh, sorry in this case it's class A so let's look at uh, quadrant 3 first now, how do we how do we count, uh, measure the area coverage by grass A? So, if the area is more than half of this this square, then we are going to take it as one. If it is less than half, then we are not going to count it. All right. So now look at it. So this one is more than is more than half so I'm going to take it as 1 this is 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 16 okay then what about this I'm not sure whether it has exited half of that square um, no it's less than okay it's less than I'm not going to I'm not going to take it then this is 17, 18, 19, and 20. Alright, and each 
each square here, the area is 0 0.01 meter square. So I have 20 of them. So what is the area covered by this class A? It is 0 0.2 meter square. Then back to quadrant 1. All right. So here I have I have measured and the area covered by class A is 0 0.28 meter square. This is the quadrant number 2. Area covered by class A is 0 0.2 meter square again area uh, quarter three we have just look at it it is 0 0.2 meter square now we have quadrant four 0 0.12 meter square quadrant five 0 0.25 meter square quadrant number six 0 0.15 meter square now look at it this part okay and uh, this part falls outside the quadrant so I am not going to to measure them then here comes a quadrant seven well that's a lot here it's 0 0.48 meter square quadrant eight 0 0.31 meter square Quadrant number 9, the area covered by class A is 0 0.24 meter square and last one is 0 0.29 meter square. Alright, now let's apply into our formula. What is the percentage coverage of class A? So it is given by area covered by class A in all quadrants in meter square divided by the number of quadrants times the quadrant area times 100%. So in this case, I'm going to get the area covered by the grass in all quadrants, okay? Uh, in Q3, now the third quadrant, the area covered is 0 0.2 meter square. 0 0.2 meter square. So the summation, uh, the summation of the area covered by grass A will be 2.52 meters square and the number and the number of quadrant is 10 and each quadrant is 1 meter square. So actually we have 2.52 meters square out of 10 meters square that is covered by grass A. So what is the percentage coverage? The per Today we shall look at estimation of population size. There are actually two techniques used to estimate the population size. One is used for organisms that do not move, they are immobile. So this technique is known as the, sem uh, the, the quadrant sampling technique. Now the other one is used if the organisms move around. And this technique is known as the CMRR technique, which is the capture, mark, release and recapture technique. Let's look at the first technique. Now, what is a quadrant? A quadrant is a square frame made of metal, wood, or string. And the size of the quadrant depends on the size, the distribution, and of course, the density of the organisms. Let's say if you want to study the population of grass on a field, then most likely we need a quadrant of 1 meter times 1 meter because the field is so big. And then on the other hand, if you want to study the population size of lichen, lichen is so small, and most likely we are we are going to use a quadrant okay, of 10 cm times 10 cm. And there are three formulae come with three uh, with this quadrant sampling, uh, sampling technique. The first one is percentage coverage, the second one is density, and the third one is frequency. So let me show how they work. So let's look at percentage coverage. Now, when are we going to use this formula? So the, uh, this formula is used, for example, when you can't, you can't actually differentiate uh, each, each in the individual plant. Now, for example, like the grasses here, look at it. It will take you years, uh, years for you to calculate the number of them. 
Uh, so it is impractical to use uh, density and in this time we got to use percentage coverage. In the second formula, we are dealing with the total number of individuals of a species in the quadrant. So this formula is suitable to be used if we are able to count the number of each individual in that specific habitat. Then what about frequency? Now if you are lazy enough, you do not have time to, to count uh, to calculate the percentage coverage or you don't want to, to count each each individual species in that habitat then you might consider using frequency i'm going to show you with example now let this one be our school field wow it's so big now we are going to study the population size of two organisms here one is grass a uh, and the other one is plant B and plant B you can you can see each individual plant but grass A because they they uh, spread by running roots okay you can't actually uh, separate the, the grasses okay from uh, one individual from the other individual uh, so to to estimate their population size I'm going to get 10 students to help me each of them with uh, uh, with a quadrant and the size of the quadrant is 1 meter times 1 meter. Alright, now they are on the school field. Then they throw their quadrant randomly on the school field. Then I ask them to estimate the percentage coverage of, uh, let's say, uh, sorry, in this case it's class A. So let's look at uh, quadrant 3 first. Now, how do we how do we uh, measure the area coverage by grass A? So, if the area is more than half of this, this square, then we are going to take it as 1. If it is less than half, then we are not going to count it. Alright, so now look at it. So, this one is more than, is more than half. So I'm going to take it as 1. This is 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 16. Okay, then what about this? I'm not sure whether it has exited half of that square. Um, no, it's less than. Okay, it's less than. I'm not going to, I'm not going to take it. Then this is 17, 18, 19, and 20. All right, and each, each square here, the area is 0 0.01 meter square. So I have 20 of them. So what is the area covered by this grass A? It is 0 0.2 meter square. Then back to quadrant one. All right. So here I have, I have measured, and the area covered by class A is zero point two eight meter square. This is the quadrant number two. Area covered by class A is zero point two meter square again. Area uh, quadrant three. We have just look at it. It is zero point two meter square. Now we have quadrant 4, 0 0.12 meter square. Quadrant 5, 0 0.25 meter square. Quadrant number 6, 0 0.15 meter square. Now look at it. This part, okay, and this part falls outside the quadrant so I am not going to to measure them then here comes a quadrant 7 wow that's a lot here it's 0 0.48 meter square quadrant 8 0 0.31 meter square quadrant number 9 the area covered by class A is 0 0.24 meter square and last one is 0 0.29 meter square all right now let's 
applied into our formula. What is the percentage coverage of class A? So it is given by area covered by class A in all quadrants in meter square divided by the number of quadrants times the quadrant area times 100%. So in this case, I'm going to get the area covered by the class in all quadrants, okay? Uh, in Q3, now the third quadrant, the area covered is 0 0.2 meter square. 0 0.2 meter square. So the summation, uh, the summation of the area covered by class A would be 2.52 meter square and the number and the number of quadrants is 10 and each quadrant is 1 meter square so actually we have 2.52 meter square out of 10 meter square that is covered by grass A so what is the percentage coverage the percentage is 25.2 percent so we can actually say that 25 percent of the 10 quadrant are actually covered by grass A. All right, so it gives slightly about the, the picture about so it gives us the picture about their distribution whether um, they are a lot or they are less in that habitat. Now we are going to look at plant B. Now in plant B, I am able to count each individual. So that's why I choose to find their density. Now so in quadrant number one, now you can count each individual dense, uh, each individual plant here. In this quadrant number one, I can find one plant, two plants, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight here. All right, so the number of plant B in this quadrant is eight. Then quadrant number two, I have four. Quadrant number three, I have uh, quadrant number three is zero. Unfortunately, we don't find any uh, plant B there. And then quadrant number four, we have nine. Number five, six. Number six, okay, quadrant number six, we have 12. Quadrant number seven, we have, we have six. Quadrant number eight, we have six. Number nine, two, and number 10, okay. And number 10, we have the most number of grass uh, of, of plant B, which is 22. Now, after gathering enough information, uh, the data from the school field, we are now going back to the lab to do our calculation. Density is given by the total number of individuals of that species in all quadrants divided by the number of quadrants times the quadrant area. Alright, so what is the total number in 10 quadrants here? It will be 75. Okay, please to, uh, take note that, okay, quadrant 3, there is no plant B at all. Alright, now, even though there is no plant B, but we still have to take it into consideration of the of the uh, the area covered by this quadrant all right so the total look at it the number of quadrant is still 10 even though quadrant 3 doesn't have any plant b now eventually we get at this conclusion basically we are able to find 7.5 plants uh, uh, 7.5 plants b per meter square yeah, of this uh, in this habitat then what about frequency now frequency can be applied for grass a and uh, plant b it is because frequency <coughs> doesn't look at the percentage coverage by the plant or the number the number of each individuals in that habitat so look at how we apply it. Uh, we got to find the number of quadrants containing the species divided by the number of quadrants times 100%. So out of this 10 quadrant, now basically I am able to find grass A. All right. So all the 10 quadrants have grass A. 
So here I have 10. And what is the total number of quadrants that I have asked my student to place on, on the field? It's also 10 times 100%. So I would say that the frequency of grass A in the habitat is 100%. And what about plant B? Now we have just mentioned that quarter 3 doesn't have plant B. Then the rest, they all have. So that's why the frequency of plant B is 9 out of 10 times 100. Then you get 90%. Of course, if you compare them to the first two formulae, then you will discover that actually frequency yeah, give, gives us a wrong, not a very accurate impression about their population size. I would say that the percentage coverage and density is more accurate than frequency. Okay, so we are done with this part. Now just a, just a reminder, let's take it again. So each if you can count each individual, then you got to you got to use density. Otherwise, you should use percentage coverage. If you are lazy enough, then only you use frequency. Okay, now let's proceed with the second technique. Now the second technique is used to estimate the population of animals. For example, because animals are mobile, they move around. So I'm oh no, I bring you this jar. Now inside the jar we have X number of marbles. So your task right now is to find me the total number of marbles in this in this jar. I'm going to give you 30 seconds. Okay, let's count. What do you think? Is it possible to count? So in this case, biologists don't actually count uh, the number of animals in that habitat. What we do is just to estimate them. So let the marble here be the mouse in this case, and let the jar be the habitat of mice. Now let's see. I do not know what is the total number of um, mice in this habitat. So I'm going to capture them. So in my first capture, let's say I have captured 500 of them. And then I mark all of them red. Of course, I don't mark the body red. Of course, they will be, they will be uh, sabotaged by their friends. I just mark the tail red. But I have to be careful that okay, the red might not cause any trouble to them or might not invite any danger to them. So in and then what do I do? Okay, I have captured I have captured five hundred of them. I have marked the five hundred. Then I'm going to release the five hundred back to the environment. So in this case, I put back the marbles that have been that have been let's say yeah standard rate back into this jar. Then what do I do is I shake the jar so that the mark marble mix well with the rest. Then what do I do then? I must recapture them. In my second capture, so let's say this time I managed to capture 1,500 marbles. And since the mark has mixed well with the unmark, so I'm going to I'm going to get some mark marbles in my second capture. So let okay let the number of mark in the second capture be uh, let's say 75. 75. So with this information, we are going to apply in this formula. Now what is the formula? The formula is number of first capture times the number of second capture divided by number of mark in second capture. Alright, so what is the number of first capture? The number of first capture is 500. It's 500. The number of second capture is 1,500. Hundred, and the number of mark in second capture is seventy-five. Okay, so now let's uh, do the calculation. Five hundred times one thousand five hundred divided by seventy-five. That makes ten thousand. Okay, thank you so much. 
that makes 10,000. Now, so in this case, what we can say about the number of bubbles and uh, not the bubble, the number of marbles in this jar, it will it will be very close to ten thousand. Remember, in both techniques, we only try to estimate the population size. We will never know the exact population size. But what are the shortcomings of this method? First of all, we assume that uh, there is no depth. Okay, but what is the shortcomings of uh, this method? Number one, we assume that the death rate is equal to the birth rate. This is number one. And then number two, we assume that there is no migration at all. There is no immigration or an emigration at all. Because if there is a migration, then definitely uh, this method is not going to be accurate. And then number three, we also assume that the mark animals actually mix well with the rest, uh, with, the, with their friends. And they are not killed yeah, in this process. So if any of the one that we mentioned just now yeah, doesn't hold true, then this, uh, this technique is not going to tell us uh, the, the estimated population. If any of the assumptions doesn't hold true, then basically the estimation of the population will not be accurate. Now, let's look at how we derive at this formula. Now, so basically to count, to estimate the population size of animals, we just need to get the ratio of mark to the total. In the first capture, I have marked the 500 rate. But do I know the population or the total number of marbles in this case? I do not know. Okay, let it be x. And then in my second capture, in my second capture, out of 1,500, now this will be my total, only 75 are marked. Now I have just formed an equation. From ratio, I have just formed an equation. So how do I find the x? Now look at it. x is given by 500 times 1,500 divided by 75, which is 10,000. Now do you see that? They are actually very similar. Now they are exactly the same as what is shown in the formula just now. So right now, I hope that you know how do we get this formula and don't just memorize it without knowing the basic um, of this formula. Okay, so with this, thank you so much. See you.